always spend time with you. As I say, always enter the temple of God with a smile on your face. Don't be so tense, relax, you have the presence of the Lord. As I said in the introduction, Pope Francis, in his apostolic exhortation, his document, given in 2021, called Amor is this year, he advocated numbers 190 to 191. You can check online. To dedicate the last Sunday of the month of July to the elderly, the grandparents. How many of you here grandparents? So today we reflect upon, upon this feast for the memory of grandparents. It's a joke even then. Their names are not found in the Bible, by the way. Alright? Just because their names are not found in the Bible, that does not mean Jesus did not have grandparents. You get my point? We also had grandparents. Everything is not written down. That does not mean our grandparents did not exist. Okay? The early Christians had no problem with all these traditions, with all these devotions. It was quite common. Only the modern generation, they have a problem. If they are not written in the Bible, they don't want to accept it. I think it is foolishness because everything cannot be written down as a job. They have encouraged himself says in his last chapter. Okay. So we are celebrating the memory of St. Jyoti and the grandparents of Jesus. You know, somebody has said, our life here on earth is governed by three letters. Three letters. B, C, D. B, C, D. What it is, we shall see. When a child dies, when a baby dies, we say, it's the death of the future. When a baby dies, we say the future is gone, the hope is gone. When a youth dies, we say we have lost the present. The youth symbolizes the present time, the child symbolizes the future time. And when an elderly person dies, we say we have lost the past, we have lost the history. Unfortunately, the whole human life revolves around this three. And our whole modern life is targeting this three. We have B, which is birth. And we have D, which is death. Now these two big events of our life are not in our control. We cannot control our birth. We cannot control to which parents we will be born, in which family we will enter, in which country we will be born, we have no control. But is trust on us without our permission. So also T for death. Death is not an inner control. It is said death is death. Death is blind. Death is death means no matter how much you cry, no matter how much you appeal, no matter how much you invest, no matter how much money you want to throw and ask death, give me one more day to live, give me one more year to live, death is death. No matter how much you cry, it will never listen. When the time is now, you have to go. Death is blind. It doesn't matter whether you are beautiful or ugly. Death is blind. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor. Death is blind. It doesn't matter which country you come from. Death is blind. When death knocks on the door, you have to go. So again, death is not in our control. We cannot control death. Neither birth nor death. BD, which is a letter in between. You don't know the alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The middle one is C. C stands for choice. From our birth till our death, all that we do is our choice. 
Our life is governed by a choice, the small or big choices that we make every day, every hour, every minute. And the choices that you and I we make either brings happiness or brings a lot of pain. Either brings happiness or a lot of pain. Now, in this modern world, in the past 30, 40 years, we have seen such drastic change in our world. So much of change. Why do babies die? Why do babies die? Because of our choices. Now, for thousands of years, we lived in a joint family, close knit family, parents, grandparents, great grandparents, children, grandchildren all together. And in the last 50 years, we have started a new concept called nuclear families. You follow? Uh, since I'm from India, uh, a little words from uh, the Hindi. You know, in Hindi they say, Ham do, hamare do. We are two, husband and wife, and two children enough for us. But in the past, during our grandparents' days, Ham do, hamare dasma. In other words, you know, our grandparents had 10, 12 children, almost a football team. In the last 20 years, now we see Ham do, hamare ek. One couple, one child, one child policy. And in the future, we don't know maybe how to hammer half. We do not know in the future what will happen. You know, in Bangalore, in India, there is a club called NKNK. NKNK, what is NKNK? No kitchen, no kids. They get married, but no kitchen, no working in the kitchen, no kids. They made a choice. They made a choice. The world today is becoming so individualistic. What is this, what is this world? You and me. I, me, myself, my happiness, my ambition, my desire, my fulfillment. I, me, myself. And this is thrust on us by the corporate world, by a philosophy called capitalism. And therefore, we make choices depending on this philosophy. I, me, myself, my desire, my pleasure, my happiness, my ambition. And so, it has brought in a contraceptive mentality. Contraceptive. Where do the most babies die? Where do the most babies die? In the womb of the mother. And therefore today, all, all over the world, there are millions of babies being killed in the womb of the mother. Mother Teresa said, if there is violence in the womb of the mother, how can there be peace in the womb of Mother Earth? If when life begins, life of a baby, the new birth of a baby is a symbol of joy. New birth of a baby is a symbol of future. But when the joy is still within the womb of the mother, how can we have peace in the world? So many times we feel sorry for elderly people, but we also need to think about what is happening in the womb of the mother. More babies are killed in the womb of the mother than in the boss world all over the world. Now, when you have this philosophy, I, me, myself, this is my body, this is my life, I decide what to do, indirectly, you are also killing not only your family, you are also, also the church. In many parishes over times, we would have 50, 60 baptism per year. Now we have five or six. Who kills the church? Who murders the church? You are not only killing your own family, you are also killing the larger picture, the church, the bride of Christ. Who is killing the future? Who is killing that hope? New birth signifies hope. New birth signifies future. New birth signifies joy. 
The choices that we make can bring happiness or pain. Or pain. We have this big group of teenagers or the youth, maybe age of people between 15 and 30. What are the choices they make? This world has seen millions of deaths because of accidents, because of drugs, because of alcohol, because of war. How many youth we have lost? How many? Why? The choices that they make. The choices that they make. And when, as I said, when youth are lost, the present is lost. When babies are lost, the future is gone. Who thinks about all this? We only think about I, me, myself. Who thinks about the bigger picture? And when youth are gone, what about the families and what about the church? And then, when elderly die, our history is there. When elderly die, the wisdom of the past is gone. When elderly die, all their experiences, the treasure box of the experiences is gone. In other words, when elderly die, we lose our past. And when we lose our past, and when we lose our wisdom and experience of the elderly, how can we move forward? How can we move forward? Now, maybe because of various reasons, we human beings, we tend to move out away from our loved ones. Maybe because of extreme poverty, maybe because of family fights, Maybe because of some childhood bad experiences, we tend to leave our family, our parents, and grandparents, and move on and go somewhere else. So maybe, maybe pure selfishness. Maybe pure selfishness. Now today, since we are reflecting on grandparents' day, let us think about these grandparents. How many grandparents, or maybe even parents, and only homes? Why would we choose a mushroom? Why are they mushroom? What about you? When you become old, would you prefer to be with your children, grandchildren, or your older children? It's a choice that you make. How you treat your parents and grandparents is a choice that you make. It is your choice to bring joy in their life or to bring pain in their life. And so today, so many. In Indian context alone, 6%, 6% in Indian population, Indian population is big, it comes to about 85 million people. 85 million people are elderly in India alone. Such a big number. Thanks to medicine, thanks to medical technology, now we can live a little longer, not like all the days.
identity crisis. For 40 years, 50 years, we worked so much, sacrificed so much, and now in our old age, we have to die alone. What about you and me when our time comes to be old, when we cannot walk, when we cannot sit, when we cannot go to the toilet? Is any money enough? Is once on the way phone call, once a week phone call enough? Would you like that? It's a choice. The type of lifestyle we embrace is a choice. We can understand when things are very difficult because of poverty and family tension, but many times we make a choice. I, me, myself, my ambition, my desire. I leave the nest that was created by my parents and grandparents. I fly like a bird and go far away. I build my own nest and I forget the nest of my parents. <coughs> now, I want to tell you a couple of things. First, this world has become so selfish. You who are working so hard, see that. See that you don't transfer everything you have on your children's name. You get my point? All your hard-earned money, your finances, your property, your gold, whatever, do not give everything to your children. You will be a loser. You will be a loser. Don't be foolish. Right? Keep something for your old age. Keep something for your old age. You have a right for your rightful entertainment after working so hard to enjoy your life when you retire. So don't be foolish. That's the first thing I want to tell you. Many parents have made a mistake, you know, transferring all their money, gold property in the name of the children, and then they live the very isolated life. Today's kids are, it's a fact, today's kids are quite selfish. Right? They don't think about the future, about the opinion. They only think about buying me myself. The second thing I want to tell you is, as parents, first seven years of your child life is very, very crucial. If you are not going to spend physically time with your children first seven years, it will affect the life of the children and also your old age. Whatever sacrifices you have to do, make it in order to spend time with your children for seven years. It's very, very important for the psychological, emotional development of your child. Now one reason, one reason children go far away from their parents is because they did not experience that love when they were small. Children complain, my father was not at home, my mother was not take care of me. Neglect can cause trauma in the mind of a child. Abuse can cause trauma in the mind of a child. If you have neglected your children for seven years, if you have abused your children for seven years, unfortunately, there are also very pathetic parents. Pathetic fathers who have sexually abused their own children. This pathology is, is a sickness. Now don't expect such children to take care of you when you become old. There are many cases when parents abuse their children. Many, many cases. I have dealt with many. If you are aware that you have done something wrong to your children, when you are realizing that you are so weakness, so that you enjoy your old age. Alright, don't sit with your ego. If you want to enjoy a happy life, see that there is a connection. If there is no psychological or emotional connection between parents and children, old age retirement becomes difficult. Now if you, if you had bad experiences with your own parents or with your own grandparents, ask the Lord to give you the grace to forgive them. Because forgiveness is going to liberate you and forgiveness is going to take away the burden from your chest and set you free. See, no parent is perfect. No grandparent is perfect. We all make mistakes. But we have a beautiful thing in Christianity called forgiveness. 
We have a beautiful thing in Christianity called the grace of God. The grace of God gives us, gives us the strength to forgive all that has happened in the childhood. Because all our adulthood is affected and influenced by what has happened in our childhood. So as we celebrate this feast and remember the great parents of Jesus, let us remember the words of St. Paul in his letter to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 says, Honor your father and your mother, and you will live long here on earth. Honor your father and mother, and you will live long here on earth. Pope Francis, when he gave this document on Maurice Leticia, he called for celebration of World Elderly Day, and for the first World Elderly Day, he chose the theme taken from Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 I am with you. I am with you. To give security to the elderly people, I am with you. Today, call up your parents or grandparents and tell Mama, I am with you. Dada, I am with you. Nana, Papa, Grandpa, whatever, I am with you. Give them the security, take away their identity crisis. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.